In today's video, I'll answer your question, what is the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Then afterwards, as always, I'll share some helpful resources, so stick around until the end. The baptism of the Holy Spirit may be defined as that work whereby the Spirit of God places the believer into union with Christ and into union with other believers in the body of Christ at the moment of salvation. The baptism of the Holy Spirit was predicted by John the Baptist in Mark chapter 1 verse 8 and by Jesus before he ascended to heaven. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 1 verse 5. This promise was fulfilled on the day of Pentecost for the first time. People were permanently indwelt by the Holy Spirit and the church had begun. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verses 12 through 13 is the central passage in the Bible regarding the baptism of the Holy Spirit. For we were all baptized by one spirit into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slave or free, and we were all given the one spirit to drink. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13. Notice that we all have been baptized by the Spirit. All believers have received the baptism, synonymous with salvation, and it is not a special experience for only a few. While Romans chapter 6, verses 1 through 4 does not mention specifically the Spirit of God, it does describe the believer's position before God in language similar to the 1 Corinthians passage. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death, in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. The following facts are necessary to help solidify our understanding of spirit baptism. First, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13 clearly states that all have been baptized, just as all been given the spirit to drink, the indwelling of the spirit. Second, nowhere in scripture are believers told to be baptized with, in, or by the spirit, or in any sense to seek the baptism of the Holy Spirit. This indicates that all believers have had this experience. Third, Ephesians chapter 4 verse 5 seems to refer to spirit baptism. If this is the case, spirit baptism is the reality for every believer, just as one faith and one father are. In conclusion, the baptism of the Holy Spirit does two things. First, it joins us to the body of Christ. And second, it actualizes our co-crucifixion with Christ. Being in his body means we are risen with him to newness of life. We should then exercise our spiritual gifts to keep that body functioning properly, as stated in the context of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13. Experiencing the one spirit baptism serves as the basis for keeping the unity of the church, as in the context of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 5. Being associated with Christ in his death, burial, and resurrection through spirit baptism establishes the basis for our separation from the power of indwelling sin and our walk in newness of life. Want to learn more? Subscribe so you don't miss the next video. Visit gotquestions.org for more great content and check out the details section below this video. There you'll find one book I recommend along with several links to related questions. If you'd like to learn about Bible Munch or if you're interested in bite-sized devotionals, subscribe to Bible Munch on YouTube. It's linked right here. Now remember, if you've got questions, the Bible has answers. We'll help you find them.